Hey guys, short little episode today because I am wrapping up a guitar that's going to the county fair. It's going to spend some time there and get judged and hopefully get a ribbon and then it's going to go off way far away. Listen, I want you to listen to this in the background. This is Mississippi Fred McDowell Bulldog Blues. Bulldog Blues. There's someone singing in this song that um, you're going to want to know who that person is and you'll find out why a little bit later. Now, I got uh, an email. Love getting emails from you guys. I'm getting more and more as my subscribers increase. Love your questions. And I know that everybody isn't going to sit down and watch my 75 videos. So I got a question about the details on how to match book. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of things real quick and I'm going to give you a couple of links. So when you see an iCard popping up, that's going to tell you to go to the graphics where it went deep into detail about how to avoid burn up real matchbooks because real matchbooks are pretty thick and they get in the way of your frets if, unless you're using jumbo fretting wire and I'm not sure you want to do that. Um, so you can keep your original matchbooks and um, it makes it real easy to put on. So there is, uh, what episode is that? Oh, it's the Oklahoma license plate guitar that goes into real deep detail specific about the matchbooks. So I'm going to give you a couple hints and let's hit the workbench. All right, this right here is the guitar that's going to go in the fair, the shot up California license plate. Uh, since you saw it last, let me get this pulled out of the way. Um, I got the box done. I got the tailpiece done. Look at that color. Isn't that funny? Tammy signed it. And I've got uh, some California map stuff going on here and of course Route 66 runs through there so that's kind of what the headstock is going to look like. Um, black and yellow it's all bumblebeed out you see that and so when I picked the matchbooks hey who can tell me Royal Crown Cola why would that be important to me Royal Crown Cola do you know anyone that used a bottle uh, neck slide made from RC Cola Let's see how well you know your stuff, but 1957 Chevy Matchbooks, uh, Lockheed uh, Airport, and I've got something to put down in here. Um, maybe House and Son, Los Angeles, that's pretty cool. And then uh, Acton Equipment right on Red Rover Mine Road in Acton, California, that's pretty cool. But anyway, this is California themed, and um, I'm going to wrap this up. Again, I'll get a couple of uh, shots there. But let's talk a little bit about the matchbooks. First off, like I said, we did the graphics episode, and there will be an iCard popping up about right there, right about now. And um, it told you that we take real matchbooks and digitize them onto white decal paper, um, re scan them on a, a high resolution computer, that episode uh, tells you everything, and then you put this on this white graph or this white decal paper, certainly not clear decal paper, don't make that mistake, and then when this is all printed up, you give it three coats of clear gloss enamel, and then you treat it just like a regular decal. So. You cut these out like this. You kind of watch. Let me get this one over here where we can see a little bit better. There went the camera bump. So what we want to do is we want to cut this out, figure out which way it's going to go because matches when you open the book up, something's upside down. But you measure this out like so and make sure that it's not too wide. And then you go up. To where everything is going to end. You see that fret sticking out right there? Let me make sure we're in the camera. There's the fret sticking out, so I put a mark there, slide it over just a little bit, find the other fret mark. And I just take a scissors and cut that right there. So once you've cut one of these with your marks, um, you just take a brush like this and you put whatever you're going to use here. Uh, the, the decal will be in a cup of water. Look at this stuff. Earl Lube Paste. You know what? All the girls love Earl Lube Paste. That's a lie. Fake news. 
but I will give it to you. This stuff is minty fresh and it's Earl Lube paste. Anyway, we just put a little bit of that on there and then you just flip this over once it comes off the paper and just set it there like that and you march all the way down the neck like so until you get this kind of look. Okay? Now, one more time, there's an episode called Oklahoma License Plate Guitar and um, there's a link to it right up there right about now and about a third of the way into it, it goes into deep detail about exactly how to do this. Now I have had a question from someone saying, before let me grab something here. I didn't want to grab a full fretboard, but pretend this is a full fretboard. They're asking, can you mark off how wide it's going to be, cut it down, and then put the full matchbooks on before you fret it? Yeah, you could do that. Um, you want to make sure that you use something that's going to protect. Uh, uh, they, have, they have a protector that is for filing frets. It goes on here, a little thin piece of metal. I'll dig one out in one of these episodes and show it to you. But you always want to make sure that you're careful when you're filing this stuff if you put these on. So you would basically put this on like this, uh, take a razor knife and cut that, and then go ahead and do it that way. So there, I guess there's no reason why you wouldn't do that or couldn't do that, um, but I'm just used to doing it my way because I'm a stubborn old man. All right, it's a lot easier than you think. You, you saw that. So I'm going to wrap up this guitar um, and get it in the fair. I've got about five days to get everything wrapped up and enter it. I'll uh, kind of let you know how that went and then give you some idea of where it went. But I'm going to close out this episode. I got to see Bob Log the Third. You know, it wasn't Charlie's Angels first, it was Bob Log the Third, and then they just stole his idea, which happens fairly frequently. Anyway, I got to see Bob Log, I got to interview him, and I got to talk about some of the old blues players. So let's hit that. Let's not forget, give me a like, metric hater, all one, and your cousin, you two. Come on, the second one isn't giving me dislikes. Let's pick up the pace. The rest of you, give me a like, subscribe, and click the notify button. And my email is at the very end. So let's talk to Bob. This is going to be crazy. Hey, everybody. I'm here with Bob Log III, the hardest working blues guitarist in the world. And uh, he's given me a couple minutes. And we're going to talk about some of the blues musicians that we all know and love and that influenced him. How you doing, Bob? I'm doing fabulous. Don't look like Bob's just quite ready yet. But fabulous. I'm here. I'm doing fabulous. We can edit that out. What do you oh. want to know, Ken? Okay, Bob. I have heard you play John Henry by Mississippi Fred McDowell. It's the most authentic thing I've ever heard. I've heard Burl Ives. I've heard everybody play it. Can you share with us when you first picked up a guitar and you realized, I need to play what Mississippi Fred McDowell can play? <laughs> I had Fred McDowell cassettes that I got, it must have been from Eli Music on night. It was at 16th and Camelback. I would save my lunch money and buy cassettes. And uh, I had, there was one that had Fred with Eli Green doing that song, Bulldog. At one point at the end of it, it was the most insane clickety-clackety sounds I'd ever heard guitars do. And I was like, I gotta learn to do that. I could never quite get that right. And then the same with John Henry. The way he does the thumb on that song, I was never able to do it correct. But I tried to do it, as, I tried to turn, that song made me try to turn my thumb into its own animal to make it do something different than what your, the rest of your hand is doing. But it was definitely Fred McDowell that made me took down the tick and start to train my thumb to do its own thing. All right, one more thing, Bob, before you run off to the stage. Um, what was it like in the, in, in the 90s when you were in, in the car with people like Hassel Adkins and T-Model Ford and, and, and people like that? What was it like everyday life with those people? Well, it was, it was um, absolutely ridiculous would probably be the best way to describe it. Um, I was immune to a lot of the... I mean, those guys were having a great time, but occasionally there'd be some infighting over who played first or who played second. 
I had nothing to do with that because I was, was the young kid who always just played first anyway. So I was kind of on everybody's team. I had a blast with um, with all of them. Even when uh, T-Model tried to stab Tall Wine in the knee. <laughs> and Hazel was trying to bring various friends in the car. Um, it, it, was a, it was an amazing experience to get to tour with them, which was the whole reason I wanted to be on Fat Possum in the first place, basically, was to get to ride in the car with those guys. And they did bring their own bottle of moonshine, which I thought was water for the first two days until I realized it wasn't water. And by the time I took a sip, there was only this much left, and it just tasted like a whole bunch of old man bubble gum. <laughs> it was disgusting. <laughs> All right, Bob. You know, on behalf of everybody, thank you for bringing forward the blues in your own way and stuff. That you were a tie right back to, to the old days. Now, hey guys, check this out. I got a stack of stuff that I'm at Bob signed. So there's going to be a question at the end of this video, and if you can answer it, then you might get some from Bob. Thanks, and, and Bob. One more thing. Thank you, Ken, for everything you do because you're an amazing man and I'm glad to know you. Thank you, Thank Ken. you. Tammy loves you, Bob. Right on. Love you, Tammy. Hi, I'm Kendra, and I am running the Bob Log competition this time. Well, you're probably wondering, what do you know about Bob Log? Well, you're in for a surprise. Bob Log angel shirt. Got it. Bob Log pillow. You know I got that. I made my first dollar selling merch for Bob Log. See? Look at look at that. Who's that? Yours truly. Alright, so before we get to the question, let's talk a little bit about what the prize might be. You know, knowing my dad and his big Bob Log collection. You know, he's got, he's probably got like the first tile he ever stepped on on a stage or, you know, first boat he ever used or a handkerchief from like three days ago. I don't know. Could be something like that. You know, and my mom is very happy about this competition because it means he gets to get rid of his collection a little bit. So let's get to the question. Listen up, old men. What Scottish band that people my age would like did Bob Log III open up for? You get one hint. World War I. The first one to email my dad with the correct answer will be the winner. I'll pick the prize, not my dad. Hear that, cameraman? And it will not be my hand-signed hand dollar that I made selling merch for Bob Blog the Third. This is off limits. But I, it will be cool. Alright. Put your thinking caps on and watch for that email at the end of the video.